And there we have it. So welcome today, October 21, <laughs> 2023. Um, thank you for being here. Hope you had a good Shabbat. Oh, what a last few weeks it's been. I don't need to tell anyone. Uh, toward the end of the evening, I'll be here if anyone wants to talk about anything at all. Um, but primarily what this is doing is, um, I guess the term is kicking off a, uh, a project that I uh, well first had the thought for a long time ago, literally um, 1995, when I first thought we were going to do something on Shir HaSharim. And uh, here we are, uh, what's that, 28 years later. I'm a little slow sometimes, you know? So 28 years later, getting to it. And um, I'm sure I got everybody here. There we go. Um, oh, we get more people coming, so I don't want to go too fast here. Everybody's heading this way. This must be the place to be. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is um, kind of a three three part evening, if you can stick around. Um, we talk about some of the reasons uh, behind um, this project, why this project, why, why now, and and all of that, uh, and and then some deep. Then after going through some of that, we'll talk about some detail about what's involved and people who want to be involved, how you can be. Um, this is going to be a very unique project, a very big project. It's going to be a lot of aspects to it, and the biggest one of all, though, is it's a and we'll talk about this more in a few minutes. It's a it's a community thing. It's not just a a study where you show up and listen or read. This is this is involvement on everyone's part and reasons why that's important. And then, like I said, at the end of the night, I'll stick around. And uh, if anyone wants to talk more about any of these things or any of the things going on in the world today, <laughs> there's not much going on in the world, right? Um, which I would probably like to have a, a dedicated Zoom room to to that stuff. Excuse me. But um, that's the uh, the rough outline for tonight. This is kind of a casual, um, somewhat of a planning organizational discussion type thing, but also some ideas. Um, what we're doing is center centered around one of the texts in the in the Tanakh, in the Bible called Shir Asherim, which is Song of Songs. Um, it's a very peculiar book. It's the most peculiar book in the Bible because it doesn't have any commandments. It doesn't have any uh, history or stories like that. It's kind of an allegory, and it's very explicit, uh, as if you've read it, and very mysterious. So why is it even in the Bible, right? Uh, conversely, because of this great mystery surrounding the text, it's, all, it's actually been dubbed called the Holy of Holies of all of the books of the Tanakh. We're talking at all the books of the of the Hebrew scriptures. This text, Shir is uh, called the Holy of Holies, and we'll get to that later too. Um, why now? Well, there's an aspect to this text that is understood as it has its time to be um, analyzed, studied, and discussed at a whole new level. Um, there is a, a Rabbi uh, Yitzhak Ginsburg, if you're familiar with him, and uh, just about one year ago. I think it was in September, actually, so 13 months ago, um, he made an announcement that um, now is the time to study um, Sher HaSharim and study and teach it to all the nations, to everybody. So this is a big deal around this text, and we're going to be doing our part with that. Um, there's a number of aspects to this project that are going to be unique. As I mentioned, it's a, a collective effort. We're going to hope to have a lot of people actually involved in different aspects of it. Um, one very unique aspect, and I don't mean to sound discriminatory, but this is really about women. This is really about women being involved in every aspect of this. And as we study it, as we get into it more a little bit tonight, maybe definitely later, uh, you'll see why. You'll see why that's important. Uh, we actually are going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Um, it's also not just a study of a text, but there's going to be a meditation component to this because you need to do both. Both go hand in hand. We'll discuss that shortly, and we might even in our in our work ahead take advantage of all the resources that are out there, technology wise, in terms of a uh, well these Zoom rooms, as well as our Facebook uh, group. But also, we may tinker around with a little bit of AI, artificial intelligence, just to get some ideas going, things like that, because it's some pretty amazing things. If once I've only played with it a little bit, so 
uh, so other people have more and said uh, there's some pretty amazing things that it comes up with ideas to trust for us to like follow up on. So that's going to be a, an interesting aspect of that too. So a little bit of something for everybody, different ways for people to get involved. And um, we'll talk more about this as we go through uh, through the evening. Now I named the seven rules for Shah Shireen just because it's a catchy title. They're not really rules per se, but you'll, you'll see. Um, and let me see if I can move this slideshow over. And hopefully you're now looking at a slide that says, uh, let me shrink this down a bit. There we go, this is my way. Okay, rule number one, here we go. So if I can get some of these windows out of my way, that's the problem with open, putting all these windows on top of my text. I can't even read what I wanna. So Luke, I'm gonna trust you to let people in because I have to shrink these windows down. Okay, here we go. So, so rule number one, Hashem always gives wisdom, understanding, and knowledge for specific situations when needed and often in unsuspecting or peculiar ways. Therefore, we must trust in his will, which manifests as the present moment. That's not a typo. I know you can read that as at the present moment, but it says it's also as the present moment. And our intention, our kavana, uh, can only be that of becoming uh, an appropriate vessel to receive what he is bestowing at this time. So sometimes on a personal level, God will give you what you need in terms of uh, a person um, uh, popping into your life or maybe a book you open up and there, there's the thing you were looking for. Could be an article, could be you know on Facebook. Um, it's pretty interesting when you're really seeking God, how many times that, that kind of thing can occur. Um, so on a personal level. And then if you look historically um, with Israel, in terms of what the people of Israel needed for their own connections, you know, you start with the, the Torah, with Moshe, and the explanations of the Torah, and um, and from there, um, you have the prophets and writings that came along afterwards, and then when you get, uh, after that, you get to around the uh, one the first century uh, before the common era and, and into it so you're getting into like mishnah and talmudic writings show up and then after that you get into an era of what are called the midrashic writings where things are really developed and you get into the early middle ages and kabbalistic teachings show up and then you get into a few hundred years ago and hasidic teachings start showing up so all of these things are are coming into reality for uh, the children of israel b'nai israel and from God um, as they're needed. Everything unfolds as it's supposed to. Everything is on time with Hashem. So that's an important issue to keep in mind as we go forward. Now, sometimes the things in our personal lives that God interjects may not be what we're looking for, you know, because we may need something <laughs> that we don't realize we need. But even, even in the history of, uh, of Israel, <clears throat> for example, at Purim in the book of Esther, the book of Esther, we have um, um, the hero, Mordecai. Um, somebody's mic is open here. Okay. We have the hero, Mordecai, right? Yay, God sent Mordecai. But, you know, the teaching at, at Forum is that, you know, blessed be Mordecai and cursed be Haman. Are, are, there's no difference. They, they're both sent by God. So, so you have to keep a very open mind in terms of what it means when God gives, you know, things in particular situations as they're as they're needed. Um, and when we look at this uh, screen right here, where it says um, that God gives things, you know, you know, as uh, in the present moment, as the present moment, you know, we have to ask ourselves, well, what does that mean for us right now in this crazy world that we're living in? Because there, there's a, a lot of things written in Torah literature about how things are going to go in the world. And how the people living at certain times need to, what they need to understand and how the right way to react. So that's an important aspect of this. And that relates to the other part of becoming a vessel. We hear that a lot all the time. Oh yeah, you gotta be ready to receive what God gives you. That's always true in a general sense, but in the here and now, in this particular generation, that takes on a very different, very unique meaning. Uh, again, according to what sages have written in, in, in our, our Torah literature that we have. All right, so. We've only got a few slides here, so don't worry. It's not a big presentation. So I'm setting this. I'm setting the tone here. Is that right? Or setting the uh, the scheme here for things. Um, we should be going off to slide two now. So one aspect of this project, as I said, is going to be a Torah study. Um, 
And that's always a good thing to do. Um, but again, the unique aspect about Torah study, particularly now, is doing it with other people and, and pushing yourselves together and picking each other's brains, et cetera. Uh, and this, this is very critical. Um, it's all the whole concept of unity, that why Hashem stresses unity between his people. Um, it's a very critical thing. It's all what you know, we think of it as like, oh yeah, we should always love each other, get along. And that's true. But there's also an aspect of when uh, there's a uh, quotation that goes, when two or more people come together to study Torah, the divine presence, the Shekhinah, is between them. So there's a, a whole new aspect of what happens, occurs when you're studying with other people that is very important, okay? Um, and this whole aspect of unity took on a whole new dimension in the last two weeks. If you follow the news at all, two weeks ago or so, two, three weeks on Yom Kippur, it was a terrible situation between Jews and Israel. They were arguing, disagreeing, protests that turned into fights and everything on Yom Kippur. It was like crazy. This has never happened. This just can't happen. It was a clear, clearly really low moment, if you will, you know, in, in that sense. And then here we are a couple of weeks after that. And, you know, Israel's never been so unified. The people are one. And look what it took, right? I mentioned Haman, Haman earlier, right? Mordecai and Haman. Look what it took for Israel to come together. And not only coming together, but it's 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 interesting that what's going, I don't want to get too far off topic here, but while I'm thinking of it, what's, what's interesting is how many of the soldiers, I was talking to one guy, he's like got friends who he knows are secular, like atheist, but they're wearing, they're out, the soldiers now, they're, they're out there, they're, they're wearing tzitzit, they're wearing, you know, and it's like there was one woman sending her daughter off. She made the comment to her daughter about, oh, you know, you can meet a nice man and get married there one day, a nice religious man. She goes, I, I don't know how. She goes, they're all wearing tzitzit. It's like all the soldiers, all of a sudden, they're all doing this. It's pretty weird how Hashem, you know, he's going to get his way, right? And uh, we always have the, the easy path and the hard path, but one way or another, it's going to go like that. Um, so study as a group is very critical here. I'm gonna pull up a little, I love diagrams. Diagrams are what I live for. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing one here. So I wanna show you this diagram. It's one that I have used um, many times. Okay, many, somebody's trying to get it. This is a diagram that I've used many times in many studies over 20 years now, okay? And it's a very simple diagram, but it's really, it's, it's foundational to what we're going to do here in more than one way. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but and some of you may have seen it before. There's going to be one aspect of it that I want to hone in on. And you have a left-hand column under the header of worlds of existence and an arrow pointing down. And this is the perspective from uh, Hashem as creator before anything, before there was any existence at all, coming like down to where we are now. And there were different uh, worlds, they're called, or levels of existence that, that flowed out um, from the perfect unknowable transcendent idea of God that we can't even think of that began with a something else other than that, um, which is this world called Atzilut, which means nearness. And then Atzilut is a world where the everything that was unknowable before existence now comes into existence in like what you would call a composite unity. It's like, a, like almost like it's all in one point, like, like the big bang theory in science. It's like this, everything's in this one point. Okay, that's what's called an echad, it's kind of composite unity. And from there, creation, the, the three levels below the worlds of creation, the angelic world in our world, all which are the three worlds of creation came about under that. So you have this idea of this pre-existence, and then this idea of a, of a world mirroring that, which is called the image of God at that level, by the way. So it's a, just like it sounds, it's an image of the unknowable within existence, and then creation below. Okay, so that's how everything came down our way, came down from, uh, more people coming in here, uh, came down from above. And then conversely, on the right-hand side, um, this is what's called the levels of the soul. So this is our journey back up if you will, say up, you know, back toward our creator, back toward God, okay? So, so you have, uh, so you have the idea on the left of how things came down from the, the singular God, the unknowable God down to here, and then you have the idea of how we return from our level of the, the lowest level of nefesh, which is the basic soul level. If somebody's walking, talking, and breathing, the nefesh is just fine. 
But then you have these other levels where you struggle with spiritual matters at the level of Ruach, and then hopefully you get to the level of Neshama, which is a real connection with God. And those three are kind of a, a set, just like the three worlds of creation on the left are a set, those three are kind of a set. And then you get to this fourth level above called Chaya, which means life. But this is also the level of uh, the soul level where our souls actually connect. So again, it's a concept of Echad. And so these, these two columns, mirror each other okay so when existence came in everything was all one within like one one little dot if you will and then on our trip back toward our creator we're literally following the same path backwards toward him now we're we're going into this realm or some of us all of us whomever you go into this next realm where you're you're going past just your relationship with god you're going past just the height of um uh, personal consciousness or personal soul consciousness you're going to another level called the collective consciousness where we're we're all united where our souls connect so this is an important concept to keep in mind as part of this whole project going forward and the, and the study etc and keep in mind too there's this whole idea here of it coming down and going back up which is something we're going to talk about in a minute that relates to us directly um Okay, here we go. So that's concerning how study and how we need to, the last slide, how we need to um, come together, uh, our souls in a unified way to, to study together because as I said earlier, the quotation is the Shekhinah is then amongst us in terms of helping us, guiding us in, in our learning, in our study. The other aspect to this unity, to this unification, um, relates to meditation. And meditation is different than prayer. They're both good, but they're different things. Um, we all pray all the time. Meditation is, well, there's a lot of ways to try to ex explain it or explain the difference, um, but it's more, um, it's it's actually more structured because it was Jewish meditation because it's following that chart we just looked at. It's following the path back. So it's not just closing your eyes and thinking whatever enters my head. It's actually a structure to it. And um <laughs> Excuse me. And the verse that you see below in Daniel 12.4 is interesting because Daniel 12.4 encompasses several of the things I just mentioned in the last couple of slides, because you have the aspect here, uh, I first mentioned of God giving, uh, Hashem gives us what is needed individually and as a people at the right time. And so he's telling Daniel here to seal this book, but then there's a time that will come when something is going to be opened, okay? So that aspect of timing is important. And then you have this aspect of going to and fro, which is understood in Judaism as being um, going toward God and back. So going up to connect, to get some new type of connection, some new type of uh, insight or knowledge, Torah knowledge. And and you don't just keep it up there in your head. You, you bring it back down to earth to share, to change your life, etc. And this is a cycle that continually goes around on normally. But as we see here from Daniel, is going to be something different, something specific at the time of the end, which is called the generation of Mashiach. There's going to be a generation that's going to be the one that is there, uh, you know, at the end when Mashiach comes um, and the redemption comes. And so at that time, there's going to be something new, something specific, a new ability to connect and, you know, go up and bring it back down like this, which knowledge is da'at, and this is uh, spiritual knowledge and connectivity with God, okay? So it's not like science and math. It's not traveling with airplanes. I, I'm sure some people may think that that's not at all how this has been understood. This is a much deeper thing, okay? And so this whole aspect of study, together of meditating together of god's timing of the world we live in now etc cetera, etc cetera, is all very closely tied to uh to daniel 12 4 in terms of um going up and going back like this um and this isn't the only place we see this idea of going up and down um you have the aspect of jacob's dream in genesis i think it's the 21 but jacob has a dream where the angels are going up and down up and down so there's this idea of going back and forth and then you have the idea also another one in the psalms okay in the psalms you'll see some of your psalms start at the beginning say psalms of ascent going up and there's others that are called 
Psalms of David, of David, and those are the ones that's the opposite. That's coming back down. So this whole aspect of going up and going down is reflected in the Psalms of Ascent and the Psalms of David. Um, there's other places too. There's even uh, yeah the commands uh, in Parsha uh, Hukat, the the uh, the mysterious commands that we really don't have a logical explanation for, but we do them. The red heifer and things like that. Um, they fall in a category of uh, statutes, I think they're called. And so you have some that are called uh, hukot and some that are called hukim, masculine and feminine. So there's a, a dynamic there of going up and going down too. So this whole idea is found in different places in the Torah of going up and going down. But again, timing wise, there is something specific to Daniel that's saying that this, that this thing is going to take on a new dimension uh, at some point in history. And it has to do with the you know, when we get close to the redemption, especially. Um, I'm going to pause here for a second. If I know I've thrown a couple of things out here that he, i talking to a general audience, so I have no idea if people are uh, scrutinizing me because they know more than me, which is great, or stuff, this is brand new to people, they've never heard of this, but there's no way for me to tell. So if you have a, for now, if you have a question, um, you can wait a bit too if you prefer, but if you want to type something in at any point, I'll try to keep an eye on that and pause where need be, okay? So so what we've covered so far is that we're doing this project. It's based around Shira Shareem. Shira Shareem, it's, a, it's an amazing text because um, we're, we're going to look to try to open this text up because it's, it's according to certain people like Rabbi Ginsburg and others, this is the time to really expand on this text. This is the time, just like Daniel's 12, Daniel 12, 4. This is the time for Shara Sharim to, to look into it differently because it's called the Holy of Holies for a reason. If you stop and think of uh, what the Holy of Holies was in the uh, in the uh, Mishkan of the, the, the Beit HaMikdash, it was the, the most inner dimension um, close closest to God. So if you think back on that chart, Maybe I should just go back real quick here. If you think back on that chart here, right? So the Holy of Holies would be the same. I don't know. If, I hope you're on the same screen I am with the with the chart with the two columns. So the Holy of Holies would like more or less be at this dimension uh, that's circled here at this level of Chaya, which is is it's like on the cusp of the of the infinite. So that's and where the Kohen Gadol would would uh, would connect with you know, the transcendent God inside there. So there's this aspect here too of, of what whole the why Shirah Shirim is called the Holy of Holies, because it it it's such a deep text and, and call Holy of Holies because it's that close and that deep to the mind of Hashem. So this sounds very esoteric right now. And I'm just throwing this out there, kind of get the juices flowing, get your brains going that, that this is going to be very different very unique uh, in terms of how we cover this. And also, like I said earlier, if you weren't here, there are aspects to this that it's going to be a, a group project with people getting involved. where We are actually going to form a commentary. That's one of the things we're gonna do, but I'll talk about that later. But that's going to be a combination of the best stuff that's out there and also new ideas that, that come into play uh, as we believe that they just might. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to slide four, which is a little bit different now, all right? Um, there's a concept in Torah that um, the first thing in the mind of Hashem is the um, the last thing uh, to come about. And, and that would apply to us, too, in, in a way that, for instance, if you... Uh, we're sitting around one day or woke up and you had this bright idea pop in your head that you're going to build your own house, you know, something like that, you know, like, wow, what a great idea, right? Now, that's just this thought, this first thought in your head. Somewhere out in the future, there's the house is going to be built. It's it's still out in the future somewhere, right? And between that first thought and that house being built, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen. You had to conceive like, oh, how many floors, what kind of roof, what kind of, uh, you know, driveway, what kind of uh, landscaping, all that stuff. Then you got to put it on paper and, you know, design it and get the architects, the team buy the stuff. And then finally, someday you're going to have the house. And all that stuff between the first thought and the house once the house is built, all that stuff in the middle doesn't matter anymore, right? It's all, yeah, we did that, whatever. It's, it doesn't, it's nothingness, you know? And what matters is the house, which now becomes one with that first thought. So the very important concept here, the first, something first in the mind of God will be the, the last thing. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
So, oh, I didn't pull the whole screen up here. Here we go. This is a different diagram than what we saw before. Before we saw these worlds or levels of existence. In each one of these levels or worlds of existence, there are these attributes of God or emanations of God, they're called in Hebrew, sephirot. And, and they're put on, the, we're not going to get into this too deeply. We can some other time, or you can just go on uh, Chabad or Eish HaTorah has a lot of stuff about this. Um, but this this is the... Uh, the building blocks or the, uh, yeah, like I said, the aspect or the uh, emanations of God in each one of those levels of existence, okay? Mm -hmm. So they exist at every level, but obviously at our physical, if we'll call it that worldly level, they function differently than at the level of the angels, which functions differently than the level of the, the heavens and the heavenly throne. And they all started at that level we talked about earlier, that absolute level where everything began in existence, okay? So one of the key aspects um, to this relates to the top and bottom emanations, the top and bottom circles you see. What the top one would have to do with, uh, has to keter, a crown, not attached to the body, so it's something beyond. Or if you think in terms of like uh, monarchies, the crown is a, it's like a concept. The kings will come and go, but there's always the crown, you know, it's kind of represents something mystical. So you have this idea of that which is, you know, outside of existence, as we mentioned earlier, the original, I don't want to even use that word, but the essence of God. And this includes things like the mind of God, the, the will of God, the desire of God. These are all in Keter before anything else came into existence. So first in the mind of God is a Keter. The end point, right, is down at Malkut. Everything in between are just ways to get from point A to point B. Uh, there's one text, mystical text called Sefer Yetzirah, calls them a Seferot of nothingness because they're really just a means to an end. So Malkut represents a number of things that are the end point. Uh, Malkut means kingdom. So if you think of terms of, you know, the idea of God's kingdom on earth kind of thing, that's the end result, right? The kingdom down here. The aspect of the uh, Shekhinah, the divine presence, which is also uh, the bride, Okay, and that's a huge part of what we're going to cover with Shir Hasharim and what that means. Uh, the people of Israel, uh, children of Israel, which in context of certain things includes all, you know, and all true God fearing people that attach themselves to the God of Israel. So it's not only Jewish people, it, it is Israel includes more than just the Jewish people, but that's still obviously a distinct group. Um, so we don't want to think of Malkut down at the bottom as being like opposite of God or like far away distant in a, in a negative way in anything. In, in fact, um, the um, first word of the Torah, right, Bereshit, in the beginning, and if you look at the last word of the Torah, not the Tanakh, but the Torah, Deuteronomy, is Israel. So... The first thought, Bereshit in the beginning, and the final result, Israel. As I said, that includes all people who follow the true God and where we end up at some point. So you have this interesting dynamic where those two come together at some point. Um, Malkut is also called the moon as opposed to the sun because it's a, a reflection. Um, and... In Isaiah, we uh, see a couple verses, one that says that at the end, the moon will be like the sun, so it'll be elevated, it'll be, it'll go back to that, its source, its origin, if you will, the, in the first thought in the mind of God, so it's not at the bottom, so to speak, anymore, lowly anymore. Um, you also have the interesting idea that Malkut representing, of course, you know, uh, the physical reality, our, our, our world and the skies and heavens above us. And Isaiah says that there will come a time when this heavens and earth are no more. They'll be done away with, and there'll be a new heavens and new earth. So Malkut actually becomes, you ready? <laughs> the Keter, the top of like the next reality, the Olam Haba, the world to come. So there's this interesting connection. It's very intimate between, you know, the beginning and the end. And so when you see things in various literature, such as the Aleph and Tav, right, the, the first and last letters in the Hebrew alphabet, 
or if you're looking at some uh, other language like Greek text, Alpha and Omega, you know, the, the beginning and the end concept takes on a whole new dimension here, or something like the first will be last and the last will be first. Those kind of quotes takes on a new dimension. Or like I said earlier, God's the kingdom of God that is above will be below. So everything kind of comes together like that, where beginning and end become one. Um, so this is just another important concept here, uh, because again, it goes back to Sher Har Shireen, uh, being this odd book that has its that has its place in terms of the the last to be revealed and to really be expanded on. There's a whole lot of information about every book in the Torah, especially, you know, in the Tanakh, I mean, but especially the five books of the Torah, but Shia HaShirin has still got this mystery about it. And, and I believe as other people do, that there's some, that this is a key text to the time that we're living in right now. Okay. Again, I'll keep an eye out for questions, but we'll pause. I have just a couple more slides. Now, next topic, these, all these topics, connect or will connect and they're all part of this project and everything we're going to be doing and i i am recording this and so i'll put the slides some notes and the recording in our devacoot group so you can look at it again later and if you have questions you can post them there or you can uh, pm me or email me etc I'll, I'll tell you how to do that too if you want to keep it you know privately but we are you know obviously as i said we're looking for this is a community project, so we're looking for people to definitely be involved and ask questions and come up with ideas. So you have this idea, as I mentioned earlier, of Malkut at the bottom, et cetera, down, down there. But there's another idea that's kind of sort of related to that, and that's this idea called the diminishment of the feminine. So if you go back, for example, to Genesis and the creation of um, Adam, Adam, and uh, Adam and Chava, Eve, and the first reference to what we talked about a few minutes ago, the, the uh, made in the image of God, which is that highest level of existence that reflects the unknowable God. So they made in this image of God. The only thing the Torah tells us about this image of God is made in the image of God, male and female, he made them. So we know there's a masculine feminine dimension to the image of God. That's all we're told in the literal written Torah. There's infinitely more in the oral Torah. <laughs> Um, which we'll be exploring. But the concept here is that, first of all, in the beginning of Genesis, you'll see that there's one entity, one being called Adam. There's not two, there's just one. In fact, throughout the text, you'll see the term Ha'adam, Ha'adam with the definitive article, and it's the Adam. So it's almost like saying, well, there's the tree, there's the rock, there's the Adam. It's it's like almost sounds like a thing, almost because of that, you know? So, but it's this unified, you know, entity and only later uh does this entity get split into two okay so it's literally taking one both sides if you will and now giving you a masculine and feminine dimension that have are separate and have a relationship and the relationship the first thing we hear about the relationship is eve Hava is called ezer connecto which means something or someone that opposes the other but really for their benefit so it's a dynamic here where the masculine side says, for example, is very proactive and says, hey, you know, okay, I'll use my best example. Uh, the father comes home to the family and says, hey, family, gather around. I got a great idea. We're going to Disney World. Yay. And the kids scream and they're all happy. And then the wife steps in and goes, oh, that's nice. But let's talk about, you know, the planning and the pet care and the budget and all this stuff. So it's like, She's not like fighting him, but she's bringing this other dimension into it. And then when they're in harmony together, everything works well. So this idea of Eve or Chava being um, the uh, aspect of Ezer Kenegdo is one for Adam's benefit. But as we know, as the story goes, something happened, something bad, the aid of the tree of knowledge of, of good and bad. And then there's three characters that get reprimanded. One is the Nahash, the serpent, gets told by you know Hashem what's going to happen to him Adam is told he's going to have to go work for a living <laughs> and then the interesting one is Eve Chava is put into a diminished state she was not in a diminished state before she was on a par with Adam but now she's in this diminished state beneath him right she has to subservient whatever the word is but this is a understood as a, a temporary construct and temporary is still a long time for us though um in that it lasts for um, 
the duration of time until the messianic age comes. And again, this is all going to be very much part of the Sher Hasharim study. Everything I'm saying here will at some point. So I'm throwing a lot out here right now, as I said, and I am recording it so we can keep discussing this over a week or two. But um, so you have this idea, as I said, that the, the feminine has been diminished for some period of time um, since Genesis 3, no, 316, it's right on my screen. And um, the masculine aspect is now going to be this proactive, got to go work, make it happen in the garden, et cetera. And that's related. The masculine aspect is related to these six sephirot you see that are in the, the box I drew around the six there. Those represent the masculine, the lower masculine. And Malkut at the bottom represents the lower feminine. That one is the groom and one is the bride. Okay. The upper masculine and feminine are Hokma and Bina. That's the that's really where your image of God starts. Okay. Watch your microphone spoke. I'm gonna mic mute you because I don't want to hear your family uh, discussions, <laughs> which happened once. All right. Um, so our main concern is not so much with Hokma Bina. They're kind of beyond there, you know, there's things we can study, but we're our day-to-day, -day, how we relate to these emanations these things is uh, uh, more down here in, in our in our reality in our world where uh that's what we're concerned with the lower masculine and the lower feminine of bringing them together and this is done through prayer and meditation through torah study and through acts of kindness and, and doing the the mitzvot so when you see in deuteronomy 6 5 right after the shema in the next verse the beginning of the day hafta it says you love hashem your God, so now you Hashem, your your Elohim, three ways, and these three ways relate to basically are known to relate to uh, prayer, study, and, and good work. So this is all the that proactive things that we do to rectify these attributes within us, and by doing so, this is how we connect the bride back to the groom. So that the bride at Malkut is seen as as separate it's us in this world our souls in this world that are disconnected from god so we need to bring that the feminine aspect the lower feminine the bride back into unity with with the rest okay, that's the don't take this too literally though okay so this this is the general theme of what we do as individuals and as also as a people in the world so even in prayer books in the siddurim a jewish prayer book siddur you you have places in there that says things something like to the effect of i I'm doing this, or I intend to do this for the uh, unity of the bride and the groom, of bringing them together. That's, that's a real important fundamental concept here of the things we do um, of returning the bride to the groom. And so when we're doing this repair and we're returning back to our true self made in the image of God, because it's all distorted in this world, that's called teshuva. It means to return. Another way teshuva is pronounced, at least in like Kabbalistic circles, is ta uh, uh, tashuv hey, which is return of the letter hey, because the these aspects of God, the father, mother, uh, bridegroom, and bride are associated with the four letter name of God, the yud, the hey, and then the vav is the six, and then the hey. So that last letter hey is seen as kind of like out there and needs to be brought back. And so tashuva, also pronounced tashuv hey, is return of the bride, return of the hey back and that's a theme at Sukkot too when you go through Sukkot you have the lulav and the six the lulav has six parts to it if you count right or at least six but it generally six and you take the etrog which represents the bride you bring them together you bring the bride back to the groom so it's the same theme throughout a lot of things in the Torah and, and uh, the different practices in Torah and Judaism okay and this is a huge huge theme this one particularly they're all related but this one especially is very blatant in Shir Hashirim and Song of Songs because you have the two characters and you have the feminine and the masculine having a bit of a dialogue in there at least a couple places and then the feminine talks a little bit more and you'll see that she is distant and wants to return she's the bride aspect the Israel aspect our soul aspect all of the above wanting to return and the masculine aspect in the text says yes you, you will return. It's written in the Torah. It's promised you will return, but you have certain things you have to do in order to enable being returned. That's a major theme in Shara Shireen. It's a major theme in our lives. It's a major theme in the world, especially right now. Okay. So this is all going to come together. And when the, the bride or the last letter, hey, is returned, the, the last letter is returned to the name of God, so to speak, you get 
the, the Zechariah um, chapter 14, verse 9. Uh, in that day, the name of God will be one. Again, they'll be unified again. That's these are the concepts. Okay. These are all just concepts again. Don't don't be too too literal with this stuff. So a couple more quick slides now. Now we're going to get into the uh more than the feminine part. As I said, this is extremely critical to Shashareem and, and the world we live in right now. And I'm gonna talk a little bit to that. One other thing though is that you have this concept. Oh, let me go back to that previous one. I'm going back to this previous slide real quick because I forgot to mention something. Um, the, the six aspects of the groom are also related to the six days of creation, the six weekdays in the week, and the 6,000 years that we're supposed to be in this present reality, starting with the exit from the Garden of Eden. Judaism does teach that um, the world and the universe is much older, but from the point in the Garden of Eden where they get kicked out, the clock starts 6,000 years or so that's another discussion but so that whole concept of six is the masculine the work we have to do taking us to the seventh which is the seventh millennium which is the messianic the kingdom age the messianic age is the seventh uh, just like the six weekdays take us to shabbat the the six thousand years take us to a time that will always be shabbat so that's that's a theme there too so i just wanted to bring that up because it's important too for what's coming up on the next slide because the whole idea that when we get into the messianic age, that's the, so supposedly a thousand year period of time, just like the first six thousand six millennium is going to be a seventh. There's a lot of things almost like contradictory. So it's almost like the subject of Mashiach. There's all these things that seem contradictory. Same with the messianic age. It's all these is it a time of des desolation? Is it a time of peace? Is it a time of struggle? It, there's a lot of opinions, but when you look at them all, you'll see they're all they're all true. They're all aspects of it. Some more true perhaps in the first part of it, some more true in the latter part of it. Well, hold on, I gotta let somebody in here. Oh, they're joining. Okay. But there's another aspect to this that before we get to that messianic age, so in the era that we're still in now, that there will be things, it's almost like a magnet pulling us. There will be things from the messianic age that will be like pulling us toward it, real actual aspects of it. So for instance, you'll see things like Daniel 12, 4, that there's going to be this new way of connecting with God. It's almost like a taste of what's to come. That's a way to express it. Okay. There's a principle in Torah literature called 160th. You'll see this like, um, you know, Shabbat is 160th of the millennium. Uh, dreams are 160th of prophecy. Sleep is 160th of death. <laughs> it always, it's like an aspect of it or a taste of it or something like that. Um, so we would anticipate seeing interesting things uh, in terms of uh, even Hashem says like dreams and visions and things like this, miraculous things, all kinds of very unusual things will start to happen before we actually get to the redemption into the messianic era we're going to experience aspects of it here just like in the messianic era itself toward the end of that we're going to start seeing aspects according to some sources of the olam haba like a whole different type of that's a whole other discussion but a whole other type of human being almost in you know going in but we'll, we'll stick with this for now so the idea here is that the first 6,000 years, the number six masculine, the seventh feminine. So there's a feminine aspect. The seventh is feminine, it's the bride, to the Messianic uh, age, okay, to the Messianic era. It has a, a feminine or stricter uh, aspect um, to it, right? Mashiach rules with a rod of iron and all that stuff. The, the nations have to go up for Sukkot or they don't get no rain, you know, and all this stuff. So it's, it's much stricter. Um, it's like the last stage before we go into the whole new reality of the Olam Haba. Um, so what that means is we would expect to see certain things happening now that not only would reflect that in what we might say is an expected good way, but there's also a pull on the world, on people, like toward that. It's almost like we're programmed, you know, to, and Rabbi uh, Nachman of Breslau talks about this, that there's things that appear to be like the desire, he talks about the desire for like money and wealth. Oh, that's terrible, right? Materialism. But the root of that, he says, the root of that is holy because the root of that 
is something inside us telling us one day we won't we won't need to like struggle for money and stuff. We'll we'll, be, we'll have everything we need in the messianic era, but there's a it's distorted coming through the world we live in. So you look at other issues, uh, things that are trendy. Is that the word trendy lately? Um, that you see in our world today, um, involving like you know money, like I said, or um, socialism um feminism all the isms right transgenderism all these things that are attempts to try to try to unify try to elevate women the feminine right all, all these things have a holy root you know you can talk about them differently and and yes this is the plan but they're going you know they're being dragged through the the world that we live in and so the the path isn't kosher the path is not clean it's it's I mean, it's it's you know, it's, it's not you know, but but still, you got to think of it differently, especially when you think of people, talk to people. It doesn't, you know, I hate it when you see people, talk, they see someone, they call them names, they call them demons, they call them, it's like, oh, don't do that. They're, they're human beings, they're, they're just, you know, they're feeling the same things you are, but they don't maybe have that connection or that knowledge, they're just drawn toward it. So this whole aspect of these, the singularity that starts to come back in the Messianic age, the elevation of the feminine, all of these things, we're seeing these weird aspects of it already in our society and in our world um so that's that whole six thousand or six plus one timeline six masculine and the one feminine the six days the one shabbat etc um it's a transition and we're seeing like i said we're seeing these weird aspects and things going on in the world today too um and lastly some things i'm skipping because i'm getting a little long-winded but we might come back to them um on that note, because, you know, we're getting near the, you know, we're talking about the feminine aspects of the elevation of the feminine, the seventh millennium being feminine, all the stuff, uh, these changes. One of the things that's taught is that the redemption from Egypt, the first redemption that credit the women, the women were the driving force. They stayed very holy, pure. They stayed on point. They, they made it happen. They became proactive. Normally you think of the feminine side as being reactive, but all of those emanations have both a, a you know, other aspects of all the others in them. So there's a masculine and feminine dimension to to all those sephirot, to all those emanations. But the, generally speaking, though, Malkut is is feminine, is just receptive. But there's also the the, the, the proactive part. Like I said earlier, when Malkut actually becomes Keter of the next world, it becomes proactive. All right. So the women took on a proactive role to make the first redemption happen, and it's taught that at the end prior to the, the final real big redemption, um, Zechira, as opposed to Pekita, uh, because um, that women will again take a much more uh, assertive role, a proper assertive role to make things happen. So as I said earlier at the beginning of the evening, not only is this a community project of people getting involved with a Torah study and meditation, but particularly I'm promoting, I'm vigorously encouraging, promoting the idea of, of women. This is this is your time. This is very important. And um, Hashem will enable any women who are seeking to make this happen. Um, this, this is a very kosher, a very deep concept, but it's very important that all of us wake up, and especially women realize that um, Hashem's plan includes this, that right now in this generation, that women start becoming more involved, etc. Um, and that goes back to the whole timeline that we talked about, you know, what we've been discussing all night and this project. All right, I'm going to pause for a minute because um, my voice is going. Um, comments or questions? Let me scroll back. You see this being revealing. Yeah, I mean, as I said, the, the the aspect of us, a person studying for or praying or meditating is always important to do. But as we go back toward our source, back toward Hashem, literally think of it like a roadmap. I'm going to go back to that for anybody who wasn't here. Here, hopefully this will catch up. It should say rule two on your screen. We're heading back up toward Hashem. We're back toward Hashem, right? We, we, we start with our nefesh, and then we struggle with God at the level of Ruach over there on the right hello. side. Hello. We, hello. we struggle with these hello. things. Watch your microphones, please. Hello, hello, hello. Please mute. 
thanks. Um, okay, and then you get to that point where you make a connection with God, with Hashem. That's the, the that's that peak of personal consciousness at neshama. But there's something beyond that. But that beyond that requires not it's just not a thing. It requires connection with other souls, with other people through through your study and through your meditation. There's a whole other level there, and it's expressed in terms of the shechinah, the divine presence will be there between people when they do this. So this connectivity, collective consciousness, whatever you want to call it, is a critical aspect for whatever you're doing. Even if you're not doing this study or project with us, you need to think in those terms that it's not, you know, the solo act is only good to a point. And now there's a point that, you know, is required that we work together and, and help each other to elevate, to get this understanding and and you know, through study and meditation, especially together. So that's at the heart of this. Um, and it's at the heart of Shir HaSharim too. Shir HaSharim is such a, a unique text because, you know, we're working on interpreting that text of Shir HaSharim, yet in a very deep way that the text is telling our story. The text is telling our story of what we're trying to do right now to understand the story. It's it's very unique. Um, and... Obviously, I've done some, you know, footwork, is that the term? Homework, footwork, ahead of time. Um, but this isn't a thing where I'm just going to post stuff and you read it. This is a thing where we're going to, um, I might as well get to the screen and we'll just, I'll do one last screen here in terms of, um, I'm going to move forward here to, where am I? Six, okay. So basically, this, at least at this time, is what we're looking at. And one is um, actually creating a commentary that's not saying that we're just going to come up with our own stuff what we're going to looking to do is create something very unique though just what's in the commentary and two in, ter in terms of it being partly um some of like the best ideas we find out there because you read like i've got a lot of books and articles and all, all over the place and they all have something great to say and there's so many different ideas and it's like, wow, but I can see how like this book or this rabbi or this article are saying different things, but I can see how they might connect, you know? So now I can bring that aspect in. So we can look out there. So one aspect of this is going to be going out there and doing research homework on the internet. There's all kinds. It's not just looking for share or share commentaries too. There's other, other texts, other articles, other books that will tie back into the themes and you can bring them in. So it's a part of this is going to be going out and finding like the best stuff and seeing how we can make it all connect in a unique way. And that's number one. Number two is putting our own um, minds, thoughts, originality, coming up with ideas. We'll discuss them and if they make good sense. We'll, we'll bring that into it too. So there'll be kind of an original aspect to that. Um, one of the goals here too is then developing these ideas and themes is to um, extract them back out and maybe we some of us can work together to uh, write articles and, or you know web pages whatever to bring these things back into into our world right i'm going to go up and back down like we said in terms of our relationships and culture and things like that to bring that into the real world so people can connect at that level um some of you may know me as the crazy person who does all the matrix stuff. That's what I did with those matrix movies because they're all completely grounded in Kabbalistic ideas. So I'm analyzing those, but now taking those ideas back and, and bringing them back into, you know, things in our world to, you know, that's where you can connect with people who may not read religious literature, you know? So now you bring it back in a way and, and you establish that connection. So that's another aspect of that is actually like co-writing things, coming up with ideas like that, taking themes that we develop or find and, and bring them back. Um, we are going to take themes from the text itself, from Shara Shareem. We're going to take some of the ideas that are in there and that we've developed, and we're going to create actual meditations around them. We're going to put together meditation, and we're going to have Zoom rooms where we, as a group, and Luke will be, uh, Luke who's in here now, he will be, uh, he's very good at this, and he'll be leading a lot of this meditative aspect. So we're gonna have the study aspect and the meditative aspect that will support each other, right? The text helps us understand things that we meditate on, we meditate and we better understand the text. So we get that whole cycle going. We will, as I said, probably look at some interesting ways to use AI. People are using it for lots of things. My, my, my point is, why do we think it's here? 
everything's here for Hashem's purpose somehow. So I think we can use AI to come up with some creative ways of thinking or analyzing or concepts. Maybe we concepts we maybe didn't put together. I had a chat GPT write a poem for me. I just gave it some input. I said, I actually told it to write a poem about certain things from the, okay. From the perspective of the, late Rabbi Schneerson and Chabad and Hasidus and it, and it created this poem that was like I showed it some people they're like this is crazy this this is like and it did it in 30 seconds so you know this this whatever it, you want to think of AI we can use it for the good here somehow you know that's what I'm saying and we will have zoom rooms like probably at least once a week going forward to discuss things to work on the study to do the meditations etc we may go two nights a week maybe one for meditation one for study I don't know yet and then we have our Facebook group where you can post questions, comments, and work together on things. So there's always ways to be involved, even just researching and finding texts and ideas and bringing them in. If anyone has uh, any expertise with AI, that would be a thing too. Or working with Luke on creating the meditations. And we'll have other ways to, to for people to get involved, to be involved. One other aspect of this is finding a... Uh, what do we call it? Study buddy, right? To find someone to work with. So we have um, not only the major, the big group working on everything, but sub subgroups, right? That's what I'm looking for, subgroups. So it could be two people. Maybe someone, you know, say, hey, why don't we tackle this or do this? So so that's the idea there too. And I would encourage, as I said, the, the women who should you know, we'll, we'll be playing a big role in this. Maybe if you're in the, uh, we have a group called Neshot Bina. If you don't know what it is, you can reach out to me, join that. There's a few hundred names in there. They're all women. And it's a women's tour group. So if you don't know anybody, maybe you can find someone in there or even in the group tonight. Anyway, you know, team up and say, well, let's keep an eye on this. And like I said, we're still rolling this out. I'm just throwing out this information, all that background stuff we threw out thematically. And uh, haha, you're funny. I don't have any issue defining women, um, but um, but this is the details for now of the plan of what we'll be doing. So the the first thing we'll be doing is working on the text itself, one chapter, one verse at a time, kind of, kind of, you know. Obviously, everything interrelates. So we we have we may be working on chapter one and putting notes to the side for like chapter three or four. I do that all the time, right? Because oh, I need this for later. We'll set it aside. But, and it'll always be evolving and there'll be a section for the things that we found. There'll be a section for the things we've come up with. There may be a section that has, a, I don't know, what so-and-so, you know, just highlight certain types of sections on the web page, make it a very unique way of, uh, you know, footnotes, links to videos, links to lectures, links to articles, you know, on connected to the verses and stuff like that. So this is going to be a very different, very comprehensive, very team, you know, uh, oriented collective consciousness oriented effort to create uh, a study that will be constantly evolving it's not like we're going to finish it in three months and say look what we did this is going to go on forever this is going to just keep going on and and hopefully my goal i know some people i'm trying to bring into this i'm hoping to bring into this that have a lot of more knowledge than i do and uh i'm working on that i think they're waiting to see where it goes first that will be interesting, but it's open to uh, really anyone at all. And, and that, it doesn't matter who you are, or whatever, as long as you understand this is, you know, within the uh, framework of uh, Jewish Torah spirituality, that's where it stays. As long as you understand that, everyone's welcome to, and, and you can con contact me if you're not even sure what that means. Um, mm -hmm. But this is this could be incredible, but it's going to require it's designed for people to be involved and make it happen. If that happens, it's going to be incredible because um, I just think the I believe the timing is right for it. And um, I've already got a boatload of notes <laughs> that are pretty cool because I've been looking at this off and on for, like I said, since 1995, 28 years. Uh, so I got a lot of books and articles and pieces of paper floating around all over the place, the back of a napkin now and then. Um, so a lot of things to put together. Um, there's just so many, just looking at chapter one, just working on that recently, I'm getting a head start. There's just crazy how much stuff 
comes together. It's this is going to be wild. And you, the theme of it is really what needs to be done to bring things together. The bride, Israel, people, our souls and bring it back together to God. And that opens up the door to all the discussions on the world that we're living in right now. What do we what what's going on right now? And how does that relate to this process? And it does. And it's uh like I said, we saw a very drastic example of Israel being so disconnected at Yom Kippur. And two weeks later, Israel, the people of Israel are one like nobody's seen you know like gosh everybody's just arm in arm but it took something very difficult um that's not the only way to unify you know there's also a an easier way so okay i'm gonna take a break from talking i've said a lot this is being recorded oh yakov has his hands up sorry i didn't see that um i'll be quiet so you can or you can go ahead and take the mic yakov i don't think i have to click anything right no no you're good um I just barely raised my hand a second ago. So um, can you hear me okay, guys? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, awesome, Tobia. Yeah. So um, I, I had something to contribute here because um, uh, I, you know, I have in my Sidur here, um, and I'm currently, what I've been using is a Sephardic uh, Sidur. But um, one thing that people might be surprised about the Sephardic Sidur is there's a lot of very mystical things within the Sephardic door. Um, so like, uh, take for instance, uh, the order of Friday night. This is the the Friday night meal. Um, there are some verses here uh, that are customarily recited before the meal. And it's very um, sheer Hashirim-istic, if <laughs> I can say. Can you spell that? <laughs> I hear you. No, that's cool. Yes, yes, that's good. So, yeah, it's Sephardic, right? Yeah, out, okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm just going to pull out a couple of things here from the verses. Um, and for those of you wondering, if you're trying to look this up, it's under the category or the, the label uh, Atkinu Seudata. Um, so I'm just going to pull out a couple of uh, sections here, which is which are very interesting. Um, so uh, in this section, it says, um, I shall cut away the spiritual adversaries with these praises so as to enter into the portals of the Hakal Tapuhin that are holy. And then it says, let us now invite her, the Shekhinah, with a newly set table and with a good candelabrum, which illuminates above our heads uh, to the right and to the left. And in between the bride who walks adorned with jewelry and beautiful robes and garments, yeah. her master, God, embraces her and in his unifying with her, grants her contentment, thereby crushing the spiritual adversaries, anguished crying and suffering are nullified and banished on Shabbat. Rather, a new face comes for Israel and spirits and souls are renewed on Shabbat. And then it goes on to say something, some interesting stuff here. Uh, and it, can, I ask you what that, can I ask you what that term was at the beginning, uh, first or second sentence in? Uh, the palace, uh, um, some uh, location. Yeah. yeah, it says here, Hakal Tapuhin. Yeah, what's that translate as? It's um you know? let me see here what it says in the notes. Um the portals leading to the manifestation of the divine presence. Oh, so the portals leading to the manifestation of the divine presence known as Hakal Tapuhin. Uh a Oh, it's a manifestation of the divine presence. Yeah, the Israel portal is related to that. The portals leading to the manifestation of right. the divine presence. Yeah, doors and uh, doors and locks and keys. Huh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And very quickly, I'm almost done. And it says, and then it goes on a few sections down. And it, the Shekhinah, has 70 crowns, and the king up above is entirely encrowned with holy of holies. Inscribed and sealed is Shabbat within all worlds, which is a sign that the Ancient of Days has compounded the various elements. Um, and then, but um, that's like, that's the theme there uh, is the bride and then the king above the ancient of days and the unification right. of them. This uh, very mysterious meal, which is uh, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, Ketzer, it's interesting. Uh, the uh, uh, the Atik Yomin um, there, the ancient of, of days and um, the Shekhinah down below, Ketzer and Malkut. Interesting tidbit, the word Keter is only three times in the Tanakh. It's in the book of Esther, and it's not by itself. It's it's part of a two-word phrase, Keter Malkut, together. 
So you see that aspect of the Aleph and Tav or the king and the bride, like in the book of Esther and the, and the book of Shar are very closely related. There's all kinds of, uh, I've got some stuff on that for later, all kinds of connections between the two. If you think about it, it's, you know, there's a important uh, masculine character that that's talking to the feminine character who has to do something. Right. And uh, it's, uh, it's in, and there's a, you know, and yeah, I don't want to go again too far into Esther, but yeah, so um, so here's the thing, guys. If you're not in the Devaclute group, please join. And I know some of you might be in the show, be not other, but we're going to be working out of the Devaclute group. You can PM me if you don't have that link. I've been posting it a lot. Join that. I'm going to be in the next week or so um, posting... Uh, I've got a couple of background articles that touch a little bit of what we I talked about tonight, but some other aspects too that are already on the website. But I think what we'll probably do is I'll start putting some things together with the actual study part in terms of chapter one, maybe the first few verses, put some ideas out there and give people things that they can look at and jump into, dive into. I think the, the biggest, most important role I could play is just making suggestions and, and some guidance, right? Saying, okay, here's a theme, here's an aspect, here's some things we need to connect, here's some things that may have broader meaning, you know, go forth <laughs> on the internet, Rabbi Google, right? You can type, you can do this. Um, you know, you just go out there and see what you can find uh, by Googling. For, that's a, one way to start just for our good articles and lectures. And if you find something that you think is pretty cool or pertinent or, you know, just mind blowing, whatever, uh, you, know, you bring it back to the group or you can text me about it if you're not sure or you want to talk about it. And we'll see how we can start working some new ideas like that into the commentary part meanwhile if anybody is interested in meditation a lot and they would like to work with uh luke mostly i'll be i'm working with luke a little bit but he's taking the lead on that part if you want to work with him on actually developing some meditations with the themes from the text he and i are going to be talking about some of those themes this week and you know it'd be nice to have like a small number of people maybe specifically working on that part of it you know so there's going to be a lot of different parts to work on so the main thing is the main thing. Just keep keep an eye on the group and uh, checking and um, what as it rolls out. Tonight it was just kind of a here's some thoughts meeting, you know, and um, requirements to join. There's no requirements other than you have a computer and know how to type. Um, that's about it. <laughs> requirements regarding the uh, material, as I mentioned, should be within the framework of traditional um you know judaism slash orthodox slash hasidic slash you know that nothing outside of that that's still broad it's a very that's a lot of stuff in that um, under that umbrella you know so making meditations that's something can uh we can have a separate meeting on that you can pm luke or myself if you're interested in that specifically and we can maybe have a pr private side zoom meeting or something just to, to discuss that part of it I got Zoom. I can open it up day and night. I'm retired, so most days and nights I'm available. So we could also meet on a Sunday afternoon if this doesn't work, you know, et cetera. So um, the correct definition of a woman, I'll defer to the Torah. How's that? <laughs> I'll defer to Genesis for now. Yeah. Um, so, so again, um, Traditionally, if we look at studies and lectures and books and articles, it's overwhelmingly men that have been the driving force. And as, a, as we discussed tonight, there's actually a technical reason for that in terms of the 6,000 years. But as we're approaching the redemption, that all starts to shift. And this is the time for women who are in Judaism more spiritually connected than men, guys. Uh, and this is all a weird aspect of Shara Sharib. That this kind of the the dimensions in that text are, you know, I don't know how to put this. Um, the dynamics and dimensions in that text are very, I think, um, suited for um, uh, women to uh, investigate and comment on. Put it that way, at least according to the female authors I've been reading about this topic. <laughs> so, oops, it goes the keep on. Um, yeah, I mean, there's things we'll need too, just like 
typing spreadsheets, PDF, anyone that does artwork, it, it will need all kinds of things at some point, but I'm not worried about that. No one's getting paid, not me. No one's asking for money, not me. This is entirely just a work for Hashem. If you think it's what you want to be involved in with other people for something that's going to be unique and fun and there's no like hard schedules. If you can give us an, you know, an hour a month, an hour a week, an hour a day, whatever it is, you know, it's up to you. No one's signing any uh, contracts or anything like that. Um, artist named Shoshi. Well, my daughter's named Shoshana. No one calls her Shoshi except the local Chabad rabbi and she hates it. But anyhow, because <laughs> uh, everyone's like Mushki and, you know, Anchi and Shoshi. <laughs> so anyhow, anyone named Shoshana is already, you're already in the club. So <laughs> Uh, yeah, our artists would be wonderful. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to have some artwork for some things at some point. Uh, careful about volunteering people. Uh, there's people that are out there that they may be brilliant, but not interested. They may be interested, but not brilliant. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, you know, that's, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to talk to somebody about this, but I've already talked to lots of people and you know how it is. Well, let me put it this way. I've talked to a lot of guys, a lot of men, and they're all too busy doing their own thing. And that's fine because this is this is this is just going to take women to get this done. That's all I'm saying. Um, so there's a lot of things we can do. Um, um, I, I as a woman, can I uh, help out? <laughs> uh, wise guy uh no but we could help you maybe yeah um uh, <laughs> so oh if anyone oh here's a thought i never thought of this before but if anyone plays music there's a thought uh for a meditation like to maybe if you play piano i wonder if we could have like an original composition or something like for background that would be wild right i mean i'm just thinking of crazy ideas here but but that's a that's an interesting thing right yeah, keep that in mind. So if that's thinking that right away is your brain and your soul is going, yeah, then get hold of me or Luke and say, hey, you know, we talked about this and, uh, you know, um, again, we have to flesh it all out. But there's there's so much we can do here in terms of connecting things, especially I like the idea, too, of a, a second bullet point there of taking these ideas and bringing them into the real world, not only for our benefit, but it you work that in reverse, you know, you know, I always try to find things in common with people that may have nothing to do with Torah, but you start with that common point. I don't care if it's sports or chess or, you know, news events or, you know, favorite food. And there's always ways to, you know, bring a conversation back toward Hashem, back toward God. So if we can do it in the reverse by taking these concepts and bringing them into, like I said, culture and relationships, psychology, whatever, and then, you know, use that article to, to make the loop, you know, come from Shara Shareem into the world and back to Shara Shareem. That could be pretty crazy. Uh you have pieces themed in Shara Shareem. Well, geez, we'll have to talk more. Well, I want to hear one of those. That are they recorded? You got one recorded, you could uh I'd love to hear it later. That would be interesting. Are they piano? Oh art, artwork. Oh cool. Even that's cool too. Yeah, definitely artwork. I think, I don't know if she's here. There's somebody who's actually working. Oh, sorry. Someone has a hand up. I'll, I'll be quiet in a minute. Someone's actually working to, uh, I'm not looking to sell products and all, but we might, so I was talking with somebody about making some kind of thing available for people to just to purchase, Not no profit involved. Just, you know, just, I don't know. That's just a thing. I hate involving money in any way, but uh, Christina, go ahead. You have a hand up. Um. Yeah, so, I just wanted to say thank you off the get. And this is like, like you said, this is a perfect timing and I've been looking for some, something to just, just plug into. Um, our family is looking to convert and we're in a rural area. So like everything that you've been saying, it, it just applies and everything with the prophecy and the going up and going down and like, it's just unfolding like on a personal level for me, you know, I know you say not to take everything little literal, but it's like, wow. So I'm definitely happy to be in the right place and, and just to really dive in. And like you said, um, in, on this journey, on this path, w when you really ha have no community and, and, you, and you connect to Judaism on, on a whole different level, um, that's different. You know, I just want to definitely 
just offer my resources. I, I'm lucky enough to stay at home, homeschool my daughter. And and so like you, I I am definitely available and flexible. So and it's so crazy because I had this whole idea of a project of like a Baroque Hashem project. Like how, how can we like wherever you're at in the world, like make it light up, like everybody watches the stock market. But like, how about everybody watching like who's praising Hashem, you know, and where are they at? And what are they doing? And let's read about it. Let's see what they're doing, this, that and whatnot. So I really just believe that this is just going to take off. And like you mm -hmm. said, with that um, collective contribution, um, it's going to be amazing. So thank you. Thank you. And two, well, yeah. And so just two things. One, I'll post this a lot over in the weeks ahead. Just anyone that wants to just PM back and forth on what you think would be, you know, a good way for you to be involved, what you want to do, you know, again, it's open to anything, including ideas I haven't thought of yet. I'm sure people are going to have them like the music thing. I hadn't thought about that till tonight. Um, so that's one, two, any of you ladies that know other ladies, let them know. We're looking for ladies. <laughs> we're, we're looking for a lot of women to be involved with this. I think that's going to make a huge, huge difference based on the subject matter, number one, and also based on, like I said, where we are transitioning, where we're at in this world right now with women will be having a whole lot more to offer as they did in the Egypt. They are too also now. And that's all women, not just Jewish women, but any godly woman will have something to offer. So, um, is your hand back up, or is that the same hand? I don't know if it is. Anybody can take the mic, but um, so Devakut is the group. Facebook.com slash groups plural then Devakut D E V E K U T. Uh, but you probably know that already. If not, just find me. I'll give you the link. That's our kind of everything group. Um, I had two other groups that Facebook mysteriously took down for no reason. So hopefully they won't take this one down. I have no idea why I must have said the wrong word and I can't imagine what that was, but, um, we might, might have a, I don't know, maybe if there's some people that are more working on the specific things like this, I don't know. I don't think we need another group. Sometimes too many groups is just too many, you know, but we will have some Zoom rooms to discuss specific topics, you know, short ones. Wednesday night, eight o'clock, 45 minutes kind of thing to talk about X, Y, or Z, you know, so we can do that too. And it'll be the same number. I'm pretty sure I don't have to change the number. It's a my Zoom gives me this number to use for my own group. So, um, but I'll post this video and the slides and the uh notes once i clean them up uh in the group so if you want to share them with somebody they say you're trying to explain it so we'll just watch the video or read the notes or look at the slides so that'll be a tool to use to like recruit anyone you might think might be interested uh same time oh i don't know generally speaking right now with uh um it's I think there's people that want a weekday room because they're on the West Coast and they can't do tonight because it's Shabbat. So I'm thinking I might do a version of this come Tuesday or Wednesday nights. I'm not sure. I got to figure that out. Uh, obviously, most of the population is on the East Coast or Central Time. But, I, uh, you know, I, I still got to. Oh, I should be figuring this out over the next week or so, just like how we want to do this, you know. Um, but maybe we just have a, two rooms a week. Um, and yeah, come to either one, they'll kind of mirror each other, you know, a weekday and a, and a Saturday night, Saturday night works good for some people. Cause it's, we can do it a little later. We get the East coast and most central time people, and you don't have to get up in the morning so we can go a little later, you know, most people. So there's an advantage to Saturday nights is also an advantage to a Tuesday night, you know, uh, something like that. So we, we will, we'll probably have both. I don't know if it'll be both every week, maybe it'll be both every other week, but we'll, we'll, It'll take us a few weeks to hash out like what's best. And we'll also be hashing out what uh, what kind of things people can jump into or what how we, how we can help people to figure out what they want to jump into. Um, but again, there's different aspects to this that could be pretty wild. The commentary is going to be crazy because there's so much stuff out there that's not what you think. It's really amazing how this text connects with everything because it really does. Even the first just the first couple of verses of the first chapter. I've got some notes that are ridiculous that, you know, like 
who would have thought, you know? <laughs> so. No, that's really what I love, uh, Tobia. Um, th this group is very unique in that regard that, um, like, I, I think it was the Rebbe that said that the, the Kiddush cup is full, so to speak, like right now in our days, um, the Kiddush cup is full. And um, as Ani Lippitz would say, everything is on the table. So um, I really want to see Luke uh, teaching us like how to uh, master kefitzat uh, haderech, if you know what that is. It's uh, what what they call uh, uh, shortening the road, uh, also known as uh, teleportation. <laughs> Short, shortening the road, yeah, that's a polite way to put that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Shortening the road. Well, anything that gets us faster and closer to Hashem is probably okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the meditations will be first. We're going to base a lot of these things around themes from the text. But then, I mean, within any theme, you can have basic thing and then more advanced things. So we probably are going to have. We already have like a web page dedicated just to where the meditation stuff will be. So we'll probably have different themes of meditation and different levels within there or maybe it's just like an advancement where we start with basic stuff and just build and build and build you know so i'm talking more with luke this week about exactly we've done a lot of stuff as you know with meditation over the last couple of years um uh, you know figuring out what works online and everything and so we've got some good ideas it's uh we're just going to have time to uh like the last few weeks we had the holidays and we had the crisis and you know, Middle East, and it's just been nutty. So hopefully, that shouldn't stop us. In fact, that should inspire us. But um, you know, we'll uh, we'll be on it uh, this week and posting a lot more stuff. I jokingly say this is the last item on my spiritual bucket list. Not that I'm dying, but it's just that this is this is the big this is my last big project because this is going to go forever. So yeah. Well, uh. I I, uh, uh, I heard this story where there was a group uh, of like, uh, I, I forget, it, it, it was, um, I don't know, a few hundred years ago. Um, but basically, there are these, this, this particular government showed up on boats to this, this town. Um, and they're like, uh, you know, give us all your Jews. You know, they, they came to, to storm the, the town and take all the Jews. But there was a, a small group of um I think, I, I don't know if it was like 10, 10 Kabbalists that got together and they, they were like made aware of this in advance and they got together and, you know, they did whatever thing they did in their circle. And so they, they, uh, when, when these people came to take the Jews, they said, uh, we have no Jews here. And then the guy was like, we have, you guys have no Jews here. Okay. And then he just turned <laughs> around and filled away. That's right. That's right out of Star Wars. Right. <laughs> You remember that scene? And uh, mind, Rabbi Lon on the was, was saying the same thing uh, here. He was saying that really it only takes a small group, a small, strong, dedicated group to make a huge change. So, yeah, good or bad. I mean, you know, the Nazis were a small group and they, they changed the world, uh, but we can do better. So, <laughs> yeah, but like I say, we'll have the smaller little two three people groups working on things and then the, the bigger group of everybody that wants to be involved and then the bigger group of people that are just reading and chiming in occasionally so all right well i don't want to keep anybody too too late here um like i said i'll post this in the group with notes and stuff so anyone wants to share it with somebody else and we'll get some discussion it's time to start rolling out the discussion and ideas of how to proceed and i'll also start posting some chapter one stuff to get people's feet wet to see what we're talking about with some of the ideas and how we might be, you know, with the different types of things we're going to be looking at. Um, there's a lot of clever ways to do the web pages. You know, you have like the, the text and then like, you know, certain types of commentary, maybe in sections, you know, or our own comments in a section and another section with like links to other books or resources or articles and footnotes at the bottom. You know, you can structure the web pages in a certain way. That's another thing I have to think about. So um, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm glad we had a pretty good crowd tonight. And this is just the first discussion. So I'll post when we'll meet again and it'll be, you know, probably a little bit more uh, fun. This was just general info. But thank you again for coming.
tell your friends. Let's make it happen. Hanukkah's coming up. When? When's Hanukkah this year? Beginning of December? I think it is. Um, so we'll be pretty much dedicated to this project over the next couple of months. And um, and um, every year at Hanukkah, I do my Matrix movie stuff, which is, let me just tell you something. I'm, 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 I'm Googling for notes on Sher HaSharim and, you know, you know, concepts and I'm finding the all these citations from these books and articles but they're they're on my matrix pages because it's the same story <laughs> so so anyhow that's another conversation but um yeah it's it's uh, interesting how things are uh, all patterned after the same well they're all modeled after the same pattern that's what I meant to say so, all right. Shalom all. We'll talk soon. Stay in touch. Keep an eye on the Zoom, on the uh, Devakut room. Bring your friends and this is going to be a blast. All right. Keep praying for every the Middle East. The situation there is uh, not about to get any better, if you know what I mean. Everyone's going crazy and they haven't even started. You know what I mean? That's a very difficult situation. It's, it's so many things that are confusing and not what appear to be, you know. So, keep uh just just keep praying for uh shalom and protection for people and especially the innocents on both sides there are innocent people in gaza that hate hamas as much as anyone for instance they're just trapped there there's actually i would say i'm gonna say it out loud there's actually jewish people amongst the palestinian population they're they're hidden that's a fact so there's there's a lot of weird aspects to this totally crazy aspects to this and uh yeah, I have friends over there and stuff that I've been in touch with. So you hear stories from there, stories in the media. It's like everybody's got their, you know, different view of things too. But hey, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is Hashem. So, all right, love you all. Shalom. Let's talk are, to you soon. I, I got a question. Go for it. Are you are you guys familiar with the Macomb meditation that Rabbi Bass taught? Rabbi Bass. Uh huh. I'm trying. I got his books. I'm trying to remember what's involved with that. But um, I'll go back and what book is it? One of his particular books, more than others, or uh, a video, from video the, or what? Yeah, he, he had us get the Zim Zoom. Uh, what was it? The Zim Zoom? Uh -huh. something. I can't remember the name of it. Um, if you if I you find it. Find it yeah, 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 PM me with that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Luke and Luke and I have been talking about different ideas. I love Rabbi Bax. God yeah. bless him. He's passed yeah. away, but yeah. But um right. I, I love his stuff. Real that this is like him and yeah, yeah, I could go on about him. He's a very important person because yeah. he's he's a very good spokesperson for the Vilna Gaon and the Vilna Gaon right. stuff is what applies well, right now this, in a big this way. Book, so. This book that he had us get was a study book, and I've I've got notes all up and down in my book <laughs> and um the the meditation is in this book and i could um get like a copy of it and send it to you yeah that's fine um, i mean we're not we're not we're not selling you're allowed to do i mean it's not a copy right thing. it's just a second yeah. Page or two. yeah no that's right. kosher yeah that would be fine okay. send it to me and or okay. luke or i'll share it with luke and that would be great okay. he may already okay. have that i don't think he's here right now but he may already have that um yeah when know. i find the book I'll, I'll let you know yeah um, on facebook messenger yeah the title too yeah because i got a few of his yeah. books but i know there's others i don't have so yeah all right that's great no yeah we need stuff for right. music meditation all these things are components yeah. uh, I mean, mm -hmm. music's a big part. Music, all the 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 kings of Israel, the prophets of Israel, use music to get into the right frame of mm -hmm. mind. So, music's another part. A lot, there's well, a lot of know, things we can bring in here. The music I was thinking of was the um, oh, what's the the prayer? Um, I can't even think of it now. The prayer that we always pray, you know. Um, in the morning or the Shema or the Modeani or no, it's yeah. not the Shema. Um I can't even think of it now. Good night. I'll have to send that to you too. Okay. I got it on <laughs> YouTube. It's really good. But cool. it, it puts you in a meditative state. That's what I meditate with. 
Yeah, I mean, people aren't used to meditation really much, mm -hmm. and it's awkward. And then, and to do it with other people is going to be more awkward. But once we get to know each other better and get into a groove, I think it'll be absolutely crazy awesome. Yeah. To to because that's the prescription. That's what Hashem has put there. Mm -hmm. So we're not making up something crazy. This is it's uncomfortable, but it's the you know that's okay. You know that's the way to go. So study well, meditation you know how together. Rabbi how Rabbi Bass had explained meditation is prayers when you talk to God and meditation yeah. is when God talks to you. Kind of, kind of like that. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I view meditation more like the cycle of up and back and forth, you know, you got to right. get into that, get into that cycle properly in, into that place. And, and it goes mm -hmm. back and forth. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Wonderful. All right. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there's more messages here. I see. I'm not, I don't know. ABC, that's, that's for another time. It's kind of out of the scope of what I'm thinking right now. I'm trying to think here. What do we got here? Uh, talking more about those kind of themes and meditation when we get to that. Part. Yeah. So I think it's fun. Um, some people get really tripped out whenever I tell them that uh, all the prophets that you read about in the Bible, you know, or uh, all the prophets in the Bible, pretty much all of them, uh, you know, they they went to schools of prophecy. There is a whole method, you know, that was passed down and given. And it isn't like people just, you know, woke up one day and be like, I'm a prophet now. I'm going to yeah. say that. Although, well, some people, some people do that, but you know, <laughs> although some people, yes, but it's hard to tell those from the crazies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> of no, course, it's <laughs> no, no, it's not hard to tell them. Part. Right. Yeah, the crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Arya uh, Kaplan wrote a lot about that in his uh, uh, meditation in the Torah book and the Bible yeah. meditation in the Bible. Yeah. yeah it's in exactly. That book. Exactly. Yeah. Um, of course, Hashem can choose who he wants to, but yeah um, i mean the prof prophets that uh, official prophet of israel had to be designated by the leadership as yes this person's kosher now we follow them but prophecy can be like daniel's not considered a prophet but daniel has prophecy just like people today could have prophecy but they, they're not a prophet prophet is someone that all of israel was to follow no matter what they said unless it was idolatry so if the prophet said everybody move move 20 miles west you, you had to go you know <laughs> so um that's how I understand it, but but prophecy but is open. Rock Kadesh prophecy is open to anyone, right? Right, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's all really cool, but um, I, I think that's the kind of the main point is it's, it's like this this stuff for people that are unacquainted. This stuff isn't just like made up or pulled out of thin air or the newest uh, snake oil that we're doing here. There's um, there's a tradition for um, Jewish meditation. It's just not made publicly accessible. And uh, honestly, for good reason, you know, um, a lot of the mystical things are hidden so as um, so that, you know, these secrets are not um, take so that they don't fall into the wrong hands. Um, because that's, person, Shir, that's Shira Shireem uh, 8, chapter 8, verse 4, awaken not love before it's time. You don't you don't want to you don't want to connect the uh, you don't want to turn on the main pipe to the house unless you're. The pipes inside are all connected. <laughs> You'll blow up the place. <laughs> no matter right. how much that water is a good thing to have, you got to be, that's what we talk about, like get it, readying the vessel. So right now, the the vessel, the whole concept's evolving a lot. And as Rabbi Ginsburg says, it's time to, you know, it's time to teach everybody on the planet everything now. It's, he's saying this is the rules are changing. It's the last big change. But, you know, they did not used to teach women before, women and girls. And that that was a big change. They didn't have institutions of learning where you'd pay to go to learn. That was a big change. And you didn't have oral Torah put down in writing. That was a big change. This is the fourth and final big change that it's time for everybody to learn at least a little bit of everything right now. So that's that's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, well, and, he's, putting, and he's putting Shir Hashirim in the middle of that. So I'm like, okay, we're on the same page. Cool. This is awesome. You know, I, I, I was in a conversation with my uncle. I think it was like last year or so. And, um, you know, I whispered some some secrets into his ear and he's like, he's like, hey, you know, normally like, you know, uh, you're supposed to be 40, 
years old, established in your field and married before, um, you know, you, you yeah. learn Kabbalah. And I was like, yeah, but at the end of the, at, at the end of time, everybody like the secrets will, will come out. Everybody will know. And yeah. then he was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you folks. I'm going to go feed the dogs now and myself and, um, uh... We'll, uh, like I said, be posting a lot of stuff this week. So this is going to be exciting. Shalom, shalom. Uh, wait, Shabbat Nefesh, uh, oh, oh, okay. Nefesh, uh, oh, I got that. that. Isn't that two? Is that a two part? Is that really? a what? Is that a two part, two books, two part? Book? Yeah, there's two of them. I have both right. of them. Yeah, that's I. Uh, I have that. <laughs> I know yeah. I have that. I, I just gotta go yeah. find it. I know I have it. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. That's a yeah. It's one of mm -hmm. those you like get to read one day, and then you keep telling yourself you're gonna get to read it one day. Oh, and I've I've read them. sections of it. <laughs> I'm a slow yeah. reader as I get older. So all right. <laughs> yeah, it, cool. it's hard to read, but um, he taught out of this book a lot. Yeah. That's wonderful. All right. Well, yeah, well, we got a we already got a good group of people here that know a little bit of different things. So this is a good start. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not like I'm talking yeah, to my dog. Not like I'm just talking to my dog again. You know, as <laughs> I often do. I share some great ideas with my dog, but he never does anything with them. So <laughs> yeah. But no, this is uh this is gonna be uh fun. And we got all the technology we need, and and you know, it's uh this is this is what I've been hoping to get to and finally i think hashem said it's time so at least if i'm reading the clues right i think it's time to start really diving into this uh, very very ex very excited about what i don't even know where it's going to go i have you're looking at a rough outline on the screen but i'm like who knows what that's going to look like in three months or something we, we may come up with some totally crazy new things i don't know i was just putting some rough sensible ideas together so all right, for the third time, thank you. Good night, and we'll see you soon.